Welcome back to the Anti-Meta Meta Club. This week's race C is a repeat of one of my favorite races of all time. We've got Deep Forest Reverse and it's with group three cars. And because it is the exact same race we've had a few times, the exact same Anti-Meta car seems to work. Let's get into it. Once again, the Anti-Meta car of the week is the Chevy Corvette. While it's not nearly as nimble as the Meta car, the Porsche, it is nimble enough and it has a ton of power. So on the straights, you can really easily pass pretty much any other car. Just about an hour ago, I put this car in the top 10, putting it in 8th place overall, just barely beating the other C7, driven by someone who is very obviously on a Smurf account, whoever you are, you are very fast, great racing. There are a few other C7s and other cars, but it's pretty obvious that the 911, the RSR, is the meta car here. It is absolutely ubiquitous all over the top 100. The last time this race was available, we used Digit's Tune, and once again, we're doing the same. I'll try to remember to link Digit's page up here. He's a fantastic YouTuber. You probably know about him, but yeah, thanks to him for this tune. It's amazing. While this entire track is really challenging, I think the first corner is probably the most challenging of all. For these two little right-hand kinks, you actually just want to hug them mostly and then move just to the middle of the track to set yourself up for the entrance to T1. Start turning in right before this yellow part of the barrier on the right. Staying full throttle, we want to cut this first part of the corner as much as we can, hitting these green ballers before we lift off and gently add brakes. I like to hold just about 50% brake while I try to get the car straight, and just after the 100 meter board, that's when I straighten the car out fully and use 100% brakes. Guiding the left tires all the way up on the curb, you're going to look for the marshals after the 50 meter board on the left, and at that point you're going to start turning in, still using heavy braking. Getting down to first gear and still holding full brake as we start turning in slightly, relying on the ABS, you're going to wait until you get your nose past this barrier here on the right, and then you're going to start trail braking in. You want to hit a very late apex, get in second gear, and make sure you do whatever you can to not slide the tires while, of course, getting full throttle as early as you can. You can use all of this curbing here, putting your right tires all the way up on the red and white portion, which allows you to use less steering and really maximize the width of the track. Right now is a good opportunity to talk about the fact that you want to shift approximately 75 to 80 percent of the digital tachometer for maximum speed with the Corvette. Even though it's curvy, make sure you're steering as little as you can and pretty much making this a straight line. Looking for this curb here on the left, the red and white part is going to be both where you brake and where you want to put your left tires all the way up as far as you can on the inside. For any other kind of racing, I would not suggest using a shadow, but since this is time trial and it's controlled conditions, the shadow should be in the same place every single time. So we're going to use the shadow to know when we want to start turning in, still staying on full braking. Turning in enough that you're not sliding, we're going to rely on the ABS, and once we start getting close to the apex, we're going to dip down to first, trail brake in quickly, then dip all the way back up to third gear before getting on the throttle at the apex. Staying on the curb, once again, we're using the shadow and these tire marks on the track to know when we need to turn in. Once you get fully past this first BBS sign, you're going to lift off the throttle, but you're going to lift off it sharply. You're going to come almost entirely off the throttle and make sure that the nose points in and hits the apex right when you want it to. I hit this apex just a little early, so I got on the throttle a little too early, making it necessary for me to come off the throttle just briefly, as you can see here. If you wait a little bit longer, you should be able to get on the throttle crisply and not worry about lifting. You can see exactly where the corner is because you can see this tree in the corner from before or you can actually see the corner itself. From here, take a straight line over the grass, making sure your right tires are on the curb and you don't hit that wall and you'll be totally fine and penalty free. Placing yourself about in the middle of the track, once you get past the marshals here on the left, you're gonna start turning in and even lifting off the throttle to get yourself as close to the right side as you can. My goal is to be on the inside of the corner at the end of this tunnel right here and I'm gonna break right at the beginning of the shadow of the tunnel. Downshift straight to second gear and immediately start trail braking and you should be trail braking by the time you get out of the tunnel. By the time I get to this tree trunk here on the left, I know that I want to be entirely off the brakes and starting to add throttle in third gear. Continue steering in and gently add throttle. If you get any oversteer, you've got to correct it as soon as you can because it'll be a disaster if you hit the wall. Track yourself all the way out and look for the end of this curve here on the right. Brake at the end of the curb and immediately turn in, staying in third gear. Your goal should be to apex right at this tree here on the left and continue hugging this corner, steering left as you add throttle. Add throttle and continue steering to the left until your nose is pointing to the left of the next corner. Turn in and lift just enough so you can get as close to these big sausages as you can without touching them. Upshift to fourth and continue steering to the right. You're going to look for this fence beyond the barrier right here and as you pass it, you're going to lift off the throttle after you turn in. 
Lift only enough to get all the way up on the curb, then add full throttle again. Continue steering to the left until it looks like your right tires are barely going to be on the curb, and then turn right. It's totally fine if you do touch the grass a little bit, but if you hit a lot of it, you're going to slide out, and if you understeer here, you're going to go into that wall. About a car length before the 50 meter board, you want to brake heavily, and as you can see, I'm starting all the way up on the curb. You're going to steer off the curb, staying full brake, and you're not going to start trail braking until you've scrubbed off a lot of speed. Take note of the lighter patch of asphalt to place yourself correctly, get all the way up on this curb, and be gentle on that throttle in second gear. As you can see, I got on the throttle a little bit too early, and I think that's what cost me a 24. I think if I had a little bit more discipline, I would have gotten a 124.9. Obviously finish strong by steering off the curb and coming off the grass, and of course make sure you're shifting at the appropriate time. Like I mentioned in the breakdown, the very first corner, actually the first braking zone, is probably the hardest in the entire track, but of course these little kinks can also be really tough. You gotta set up for this one really carefully, you gotta make sure you lift off and even brake gently before going full braking, you've gotta make sure that your car is fully stabilized before you hit the brakes hard. A big mistake people make there is not necessarily braking too late, but coming off the brake pressure a little bit too early. Since you're trying to neutralize a lot of momentum, if you go heavy on the brakes and then come off the brakes early at all before the car is really settled, then you can end up sliding way beyond the apex. This corner is deceptive because it's tighter than 90 degrees. I think dipping down to first gear to get the car to really rotate and then getting on the throttle really heavily afterwards is probably the fastest way to do it. Make sure that you really look and look for that tree before getting on the throttle. The tree really shows you what the shape of the corner is before you can actually see it. A really tight line on the inside here is much faster than a wide line and getting on the throttle heavier. And keeping up your momentum here is much better than sacrificing any of the corner entries or exits. It's really just a flowing middle of the track kind of sector. You just want to keep up your momentum as much as you possibly can. At the end of a lap, you don't want to go too wide and get a really late apex for this corner, but at the beginning of a lap, if you're trying to get like a really good run, then that is a good option. This is a tough one, so be really patient with yourself this week. Once again, PD has blessed us with a race that actually requires a little bit of strategy. With the tire wear multipliers as well as the compounds required in this class, it seems that things are actually pretty close right now. While there are certainly some outliers when it comes to tire wear, all of the cars that I used performed pretty similarly. With that said, I do think the Corvette's tire wear is worse than the Metacar, but that also offers you another strategy that you can use against the Metacar. In a situation where it might be nice to get an undercut on a car that you're fighting against and come out of the pits with better tires having a better outlap, it's also a valid strategy to do an overcut where you sacrifice that first lap when they're on an outlap and you're still on old tires for you to have better tires at the end of the race, hoping that you'll be able to make a move and make a pass. And since the Corvette is so incredibly fast in the straights, that is a little bit easier, especially if your tires are better than your opponents. With the Corvette, I think I pit anywhere between lap four and lap six, though I do think lap three to seven would be viable. All these are races where I started mid-pack or behind and I started on the hard tires. There are lots of different reasons why you want to start on the harder tire compound, even if you're starting close to the front. And so even if you don't find yourself towards the back of the pack or the middle of the pack, it's still a viable and probably a smarter option to start on the harder tire compound. The discrepancy in pace might be small enough that if you started on soft tires and someone with relatively similar pace to you starts on the harder compound, they might be able to actually stay with you because of the slipstream, even despite the dirty air. If that were to happen, you would find yourself defending against a car that has better tires on lighter weight than you had when you were using those better tires, and so you'd just be at a big disadvantage in general. Speaking of dirty air, we are unfortunately back to the normal slipstream, so we do not have the custom slipstream, which offers less dirty air, so you do have to be very careful with the dirty air. Though I do believe the tuning can help cancel that out. Of course, if you tune it wrong, it could actually exacerbate the issue, so of course, you're going to have to figure out a tune. If you're not using this tune, you're going to have to find a tune that can definitely handle the dirty air, as well as the tire wear, and of course, just the track itself. Now, as you can see, I've already gotten two positions in the first lap because of a little bit of chaos and just a few mistakes. You're probably going to see a little bit more chaos and mistakes than you usually would because I don't believe that the vast majority of the community actually knows anything about tuning. Of course, there are people such as myself or the bigger creators that have a large reach and can offer their tunes to a larger audience, but I think the majority of people who play this game 
even the majority of people who play sport mode are not actually watching other content creators and probably don't all know how to tune because it is a separate skill that you'll need to learn separate from driving. On top of that, any kind of hairpin, especially a really high speed track that has a hairpin is going to offer a lot of chaos. A lot of people just do not have the precision, even at the top split in our region, to navigate these kind of corners without running into each other. Now, not a lot has happened to actually showcase what the Corvette can do, but you can tell that whenever anyone makes a mistake, it's pretty much done and dusted and the Corvette's going to be able to do the job and just get all the way past them. After passing that Corvette that had to serve the penalty, we're left with just a single Metacar in front of us, and as long as we can get in front of that guy and stay in front of him sometime within the next 12 laps, we're going to have ourselves a victory. This sector right here is of note. It's really important to know that the Porsche is pretty much going to eat up this last sector much better than you're going to be able to in the Corvette, even with a good tune. So the plan here is to minimize damage, stay as close to the Porsche as you can and get the very best exit. Because even if you're not in slipstream at the beginning of this straight, by the end of it, you're going to be a couple tenths ahead, assuming you didn't mess up that exit. And if you can get within one second, you're going to have a lot of slipstream. And if you can nail this hairpin, then you're going to have an opportunity to potentially pass before the next braking zone. I want to take this chance to talk about defending going into the hairpin. If you trust the person who's trying to attack you, then I would just let them go on the inside because they're going to have to slow down a lot more and wait a lot longer before they can get on the throttle. So if you can take a wider line, if you can take the outside safely, then you should definitely do it. If you do not know or trust the person trying to attack, then you should definitely defend on the inside because if they go too deep, they're just going to go off track and you're going to be safe. Now this is most likely at least a little bit due to the driving of the Porsche in front. As you can see, he's also messing up here, but we were a full second or at least eight to nine tenths behind that guy before we navigated the hairpin. And at the end of that last straight, we were only three tenths behind him. So that is what this car can do against the meta car. Jumping forward five laps, you can see that I'm now in second place, but what happened is I actually pit on lap six, which is fairly late. I took the softer compound and the person that's ahead was someone who just didn't take a pit. Now, if you pit early, if you pit like lap four or five and you're in the front of the race, whether you started there or you just made it there, you're gonna be in danger of running into traffic. So if you find yourself close to the front of the race, I would suggest extending your first stint as long as you possibly can to avoid any kind of traffic because not only can traffic slow you down, but especially with this race, traffic can crash into you and that could completely ruin your race. And for a final jump, we're jumping to the end of the race. You can see that I didn't really have much of a challenge after I got in front of everyone. And unfortunately, this race didn't show everything that the Corvette can do, but it is kind of a testament to how powerful the car is. Like I mentioned before, this final sector is going to be the weak point, especially compared to the meta car. But as long as you are pretty close to slipstream range, which is usually 1 to 1 1.2 seconds, then you're going to be even closer by the end of this first straight and even closer yet again by the end of the next straight. And so if you can stay within just a second and a half of a Porsche leading to the final straight, then you might find yourself in slipstream once again and you can pull off a move. Like I said before, there isn't much of a strategy variance that'll work, but you can safely pit anywhere between lap four and six if you start on the harder compound. And of course, the rest are going to be on the medium compound. And you can flip that if you want to start on the faster compound from starting from the front. Thank you so much for watching my videos. If you like what you saw, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, I'll be making another one of these guides every single week. To end, I'm going to leave you with a look at my current members. I love every single one of you. Thank you guys very much.